So guys, uh, we will discuss the syllabus. So in the last class uh, we have seen <coughs> uh, the two te techniques, that is intra-autonomous systems and intra-autonomous systems. So in the intra, we have two types. One is you have RIP protocol, duty information protocol, and one was OSPF. Okay, then open shortest path first. Okay, and after that we have seen inter-autonomous system routing. Where we have seen the BGP, Border Gateway Protocol. Okay, so this is what uh, we have uh, completed already. Now in today's class we will go for the broadcast routing algorithm and multicast. So this will be the last topic from this model number three. Okay, uh, so we will go for this. So please remember this broadcast routing algorithm and multicast. So these two uh, topics are different in your textbook. Okay, but in the syllabus. It is combined and they have given any symbol. Okay. Okay. So we will go for this broadcast and multicast routing. Okay. Now what exactly the idea of broadcast and multicast? Let us see. So before I to understand this all, we will say first of all unicast. Okay. Means single way communication that is unicast. Okay. Although we have radio is one of the example of unicast. Actually, radio is broadcast only, but single way. You can receive only from the radio stations, not you can give information to the radio station. Okay, that is called as unicast. But now, only one center and one receiver will be available in this unicast. Okay, so in order to make many many users available there. At the receiver side, and there will be only one sender. Okay, that is called broadcast. Am I audible and is it visible, guys? Pranali? Hi, yes, sir, visible. Okay, and audible? Audio is good? Hi, yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, so we are discussing broadcast and multicast. So almost both concepts are same. But before that, we need to study what exactly this broadcast is. Okay, so one sender will send the information to its all neighbors. Okay, that is called as broadcast. Okay, then uh, we have whatever the uh, nodes or the receivers present in a single group of network that is called as multicast. That is the only difference here. In both the approaches, you are sending it to only one sender and many receivers will be there and just broadcast means what? Just go on informing that the, the information of the packet. Okay, there is no uh, limit. But broadcast means for all the neighbors and the multicast means the neighbors present in the subnet or in the network or, or one subnetwork. That is called subnet. Okay, this is what the idea. Now here we have broadcast routing algorithm. So here uh, you can see here this diagram. So here the router 1, R1 is a sender who is going to send or broadcast the back packets or the message to all others. <coughs> now what the scenario is it will occur here? R1 will send one of the packet to the R2, then R2 will send to R3 and R4. Okay. Now there is a one chance that Again, R3 will send information to R4 and R4 will send information to R3. Okay, so R3 and R4 will get duplicates. That is also one of the drawback in the broadcasting. So let us see what exactly the broadcast is. Uh, so here already has given unicast. What is unicast is one way. Only one sender, one receiver will be there and there will be no multiple receivers. But in this case, in the broadcast, in the broadcast way, there can be n number of receivers available and uh, see here, given n destination nodes, the source nodes simply make n copies of the packets. Okay, we are making copies. Obviously, no, sender will send only one copy. So, whatever the intermediate nodes are there, so they will create one copy and forward to all its destination or all its neighboring, that is n way unicast. Okay. Then, so again there is one drawback here, that is inefficiency is one of the drawback. What is that? Already we have discussed 
so r1 will send the packet to r2 no problem so r2 will send broadcast means send multiples now uh, if you consider the example of the radio how the broadcasting will be done so you are just uh, sending the signals okay wherever there is a steel or iron you will catch your signals okay uh, just like the live cricket match they will not send the signals to each and everybody they will just send the, send the broadcast the signals and the receivers will catch those okay that is what happening in the broadcast now here r1 will sending the packet r2 will receive it no problem up to here r2 will uh, flood uh, that flooding concept is that in the next so r2 will send the packet to r3 also and r4 also okay later r3 will send now in this case r2 will not send the packet again back to r1 because it knows that from which end the packet has received so r2 will not send again back to r1 so r2 will send to r3 and r4 now r3 will not send back to r2 now whatever the neighbor it has that is r4 it will send but before that the r2 has sent the packet to r4 yes so r4 has already one packet again r3 will send this say in the same way r2 has sent the packet to r4 and r4 sniper is r3 so r4 also will send the packet to r3 so this is what in efficiency so duplicate packets will be there in this particular uh, unicast okay so this is what the uh, <coughs> broadcast scenario now how to overcome this so there are two methods uh, implemented one is uh, so before that we have given the example of the graph theory so there will be one graph your network will be a graph v is equal to 1 comma e where n stands for the number of nodes and e is the number of edges okay e edges means links which connects to uh, router, routers now in this example you can see how many nodes 1 2 uh, sorry 1 2 3 4 4 nodes are there r1 r2 r3 and r4 and how many links 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, 4 links, 4 meters. So, obviously, there will be a cycle. So, whenever there is a cycle, I am talking about the graph theory cycles. Okay. So, whenever there is a cycle, definitely there will be some drawbacks. That is, loopings will have a occur there. Okay. So, this is what the concept uh, of graph theory. Then, there are two techniques that is, uncontrolled flooding and controlled flooding. Okay, now let us see what exactly this un, uh, uncontrolled flooding. So, uncontrolled means there is no control of every node with another. Okay, once what is the idea here? Once it receives the packets, it go on sending the packets to all other neighboring nodes. Okay, this is called as broadcast storm. Storm means it is a uh, continuous flow. Okay, storm you can say. A wind there will be storm no like this continuous flow of packets without knowing the destination okay once receive the packet send it to the your neighbor now that that neighbor may have the copy or it may not have you don't worry but only once you receive the packet you send it to all the neighbors except one which has sent it okay so that is what the uncontrolled flooding you can just see here the most obvious the technique for achieving that is flooding approach okay but here uncontrolled means in which the source node sends a copy of the packet to all of its neighbors, all its neighbors. Okay, so and uh, only the uh, packet, uh, oh, sorry, only the node which has sent the packet, only for that particular node we are not sending. Otherwise, the rest of all the neighbors we are sending the packets. This is what happening. Okay, and scenario also is given in figure 4.43. R2 will flood to R3 and whatever we have discussed the same concept okay r3 r4 exchanges the packets so they will be getting the duplicates okay because there will be a cycle so whenever there is a cycle so this problem will occur guarantee okay that's why there will be there is one solution that we will see in the next part okay so in the control level flooding what exactly you are trying to uh, control that what you are going to do you are making you have one sequence number okay one sequence number now what exactly one sequence number <coughs> so every router will be maintaining one special table okay that that maintains 
that maintains every uh, source name or source number and the packet sequence number okay means and it will check if it is there with me it will not forward otherwise it will forward okay for example now i have a uh, router number 1 is there in my list and is the source and it has sent the packet number 10 so that 10 and 1 that entry will be available with me i will not forward to other neighbor else okay so this is what the sequence number control flooding okay so just see uh, node puts its address as well broadcast sequence number to broadcast packet okay so it will maintain the uh, table and all the entries will be made there okay this way you can eliminate the duplications by using control flooding in the previous concept i'm controlled flooding there were uh, uh, duplicates available but here you will be not getting any duplicates it is in control here and then one more concept is there reserve path forwarding rpf okay so here uh, you are making some of the reservation policies that is you can uh, track some paths and on that pathway only you are sending the information so that your uh, duplications will not occur okay that is what RP, uh, rpf reverse path forwarding this is another technique in the control level in the control level there are two techniques okay one is by maintaining the uh, this one uh, table routing table and one more is a rpf reverse path forwarding okay so these two techniques will uh, overcome the problem of duplication of the packets yes so please remember this control label and uh, uncontrollable uh, this one <coughs> that is so you can see here a c and f this is one path a c f e is one path a c e is one path then a, c, a b c e this is one path and a b b g this is one path so here the path are fixed one will not change is it okay uh, for example you can say it will not come in the e to c there is no path yes and d to b there is no path and g to d there is no path so you are restricting or you are reserving some paths and on that you can avoid the duplication okay so this is what the concept here so this is what we are discussing about the broadcasting with the broadcasting there are two techniques is uncontrollable and controllable flooding first of all it is a flooding within the flooding we have controllable and uncontrollable so in the uncontrollable uh, you cannot there is no methods but in the control level there are two methods one is routing table and one more is the uh, route, uh, sorry, rpf reserve path flooding uh, forwarding now next one again one more option available there spanning tree so uh, spanning tree is uh, one where there will be no uh, no cycles it is called a spanning tree broadcast okay uh, so you are designing the network in such a way that there will be no cycles at all okay so this is what the spanning tree broadcast so there is again graph theory concept is given here so g is equal to n comma e this is a normal graph so spanning tree can occupy we can get by using g dash is equal to n comma e dash where n the number of nodes will remain same but edges we need to cut okay edges we need to cut for example in the previous example i just explain okay now if i want to make this as a spanning tree so here there is no problem there will be only one connectivity so in the r2 r3 only one connectivity r3 r4 so there are two connectivities so i can break any of these two wherever there is a triangle occurring or a loop occurring i have to cut any one okay but that cut should be in, in such a way that okay so this uh, cutting of one edge should be in such a way that all the nodes will be connected and there should be no cycle that is the more requirement here okay so either you can cut this 
or this or this anything is okay here are you getting guys so this is what the spanning tree okay and if you are maintaining only in between two routers if there is only one edge then we call it as a minimum spanning tree okay minimum spanning tree that is all about the spanning tree okay so let us see one example of the spanning tree yes so this is what the uh, main edge they are going to use uh, so this is cut so you can say a c f a c b and then your f e b g so this part will not occur there okay so step by step we uh, will see that so, no no next diagram okay fine so you have to it's not minimum it's only constructed spanning tree okay so cycles wherever the cycles will occur you can cut any of one so one two three you can cut any one one two three you can cut any one okay so this is what the spanning tree means what it is in form in the form of g dash is equal to e dash uh, n comma e dash where e dash is a minimum number of edges present in the network and they should not follow any of the uh, cycles that is what e dash okay so this is what the spanning tree and minimum spanning tree i think you have studied this in the graph theory same concept is there <coughs> but here the path is bad direction so in the previous example whatever you have seen uh, that is your bcf and uh, rpf rpf is a reverse path forwarding the path is unicast okay but in this case the path is multicast you can send or receive the information in the spanning tree i think this is clear minimum spanning tree okay so uh, he has uh, shown this example that is starting from f okay see the path uh, this one one then from this d to e and d to p this is a bi directional and one more path he has shown a to b d to d and d to e okay so 3 plus 2 that is 5 and it is 4 okay so depending on the calculation so it is making use of some algorithm what is that central based approach okay, so this algorithm will find the short shortest path and it will give the uh, least cost path to reach from source to destination so like your discrete and bellman floor algorithms so this will be again maintaining the routing tables okay so that routing table is not given here but only he has uh, given here Central based approach. What what exactly mean? So every node will be having the information about all the routers routing table. Okay. So which will be the route, shortest path to reach from source to the destination? That all the uh, things will be taken here in the spanning tree. Is it okay? So this is what the spanning tree and <coughs> actually we need to cut this one two and three um, I, I can show here i will show We can cut this up. Okay, and this one, one more I have to remove. Okay, now can you find any cycle over here? Is it visible, guys? Is it visible? Yes, sir. 
okay now can you find any cycle over there any loops no yes and if you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 will be the number of nodes that is same but what is the e edges how many edges 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and what are the original edges previously it was 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 were there so here i am getting e dash okay that is uh, 2 2 4 and 6 only 6 edges i am going to get that is d dash will become 6 now n will remain same and i will get the new graph understood guys minimum spanning tree okay i think you are getting this uh, it is very easy and you want to in the graph theory also okay. then uh, so here one case study is given broadcast algorithm in practice okay so it is making use of some uh, uh, nutella algorithm it is okay so which uses the ttl that is time to live for how many times the information should be present there and osp technology is used okay so all the things it is just the case study we have given broadcast algorithm in the practice okay. and this is all about the broadcast so please remember right guys in the broadcast we have the concept of flooding so the flooding controllable uncontrollable and we will Uncontrollable, there is no technique in the control level. There is one routing table. Uh, just wait a minute. Okay. Uh, so, what we are discussing? So, this is all about the broadcast. And now, let's go for the multicast. So, in the multicast, the concept is same, but the thing is. Uh, each node is copying the packet and sharing with the only subnet, not with all the uh, peoples. Okay, for example, I can say the range of the say Kolhapur radio city is say 20 kilometers around. Okay, only these people can uh, listen to that because they have set one network and within that network, all the recipients will get the information. Okay, that is called as multicast service. Now let us see what are they in the multicast. Uh, so here in the multicast we are making use of some IP uh, datagrams, internet protocol datagrams. Now why we are using this IP internet protocol? Because it is a connection, connectionless or you can say it is a stateless. It can roam in anywhere. Okay, you need not to give any path for that and it is very reliable one. Okay, so you can go and send in the package using this. IP datagrams. Okay. So, this is what the uh, basic information they have given here regarding your uh, multicast. Okay. So, multicast, please remember the example as your radio. Okay. So, your signals will be transmitted and it is sent in a certain area. Within that particular area, we are getting that all network because everyone is copying that and forwarding to some another. Okay. Uh, that is what the multicast. Uh, then next concept we have <coughs> groups multicast groups we have uh, so this is what you are creating the regions and every region will be this is the actually there is a problem with this multicast that is the we are facing one problem that is how to identify the receiver of a multicast packet and how to address a packet sent to these receivers okay that is addressing is one of the problem that's why uh, we are making use of this groupings that is multi-class uh, multi group okay, for example uh, a group of say 10 kilometers area we are making use of that particular uh, nodes and we are forwarding it the original signals are copied by the source and it is multicasted or I can say it is broadcasted and sent over only the nodes available in the network sub network not for all okay so this is what the difference between your broadcast and multicast and that that is the group of a set of nodes which will communicate among themselves that is called as multicast groups okay so here i have given an example uh, let us see first example along with some protocols we have yes there it is so 
multicast group. So for how many users I have to send? That is decided by these two clients. Okay. Then they are going to send and uh, it will be given only for this. Now, for example, uh, you can say this is one radio station, this is one radio station, this is one radio station. So only your users should share this particular click. That is 63 and 60. These two members can share this. This is the integer of 186. Okay. So this task is accomplished by multicast group. Getting guys. So broadcast means what for all. There is no no limitation, no people intermediate. Then no, not like that. Broadcast means just send uh, how how the river the flood will come in the river. It will occupy the place wherever it is possible. Yes, that is called as broadcast. But what about multicast? Only limited, not all. Okay. For example, some dams are there. It will give that particular part. part. Yes. So this is the example of the multicast grouping. Okay. And there we are using some protocols that is ICMP that, that means yes. So this is Internet Group Management Protocol in order to manage or it is just like the uh, canal or you can say some dam. Okay. ICMP is just like that. It will perform the task of controlling your message. To whom I need to send the message and to whom I have not I need not to send the message. That is all care taken by this ICMP protocol, Internet Group Management Protocol. Okay. <coughs> so, for this IGMP protocol version 3 operates within the host and it's directly attached to routers. Now, what are the routers we have? 1, 2, 3, 4 routers are there. So, this will be associated with the source and the routers associated with this, which are directly connected. Okay. So, that is what the uh, main idea of this IC, IGMP. So ICMP is also the internet controllable, but here we are mentioning the groups. That is a very important motto of controlling the messages. It is IGMP. So here we have IGMP provides the means for host to, to inform attached routers that an application running on the best and the host. This is what the uh, ICMP is doing. Whatever the directly connected routers are there, there it is going to flood the SMS, uh, that is messages or packets. So, more. so again, to manage the group of IGMP, there is one more area multicast routing, wide area multicast routing. Okay, that is you can call, it is the main branch of your IGMP. Okay, so this is also there in order to manage all these IGMPs. Okay, see one IGMP can manage certain devices or certain group of uh, certain group of nodes. But if there are n number of IC IGMPs and many number of groups are available, so how to manage that? So that is done by the wide area multicast routing. Okay, so this is what the uh, wide area multi multicast routing. So here also same is given ICMP, ICMP also has some capsule, cap, encapsulations that is one message that contained uh, some other information it is in the wrappers ok. So right you will not get some chocolates on that there will be some wrappers similarly whatever the message in order to travel from source to destination it has to be wrapped in the IGMP packet that is called an encapsulated within the IP data data. So here there are some uh, techniques that is some flags they have given that is membership query then you have membership report membership query, then one more new group okay so they all are binary status flags one zero okay one means a positive and zero means is a negative okay so that is what we are going to this IGMP okay. Uh, so this is all about the IGMP. <coughs> so in practice there is another multicast protein algorithm, many algorithms are there. So in that there are some specific uh, that is so specific routing trees are constructed for the multicast protein algorithms. Okay. Now let us see multicast routing using a group share tree. So we are working with this tree structure. 
and what is the uh, care we need to take there should not be any loops and the packet should not be repeated that is the two major uh, precautions we are going to take here and uh, what are the things we are going to see here four specific routing trees that is multicast routing using a group share tree means to send information to the uh, send information to the group IGMP groups in such a way that they should not be uh, repeated or duplicated. Okay, that is what the uh, using uh, spanning tree concept. Okay, so one more point. This is the first point. Multicast routing using a group share tree. One more is uh, we have multicast routing using a source based tree. Okay, so in the source based tree, what you are going to do? The source will be managing all the information. Okay, so that will inform so if you follow this RPF. Okay, whatever the connected directly connected routers are there, that will be finding the shortest path. Okay, and according to that path, that is the result path it is going to be selected. This is okay. So that is what multicast routing using source based tree. So in the previous example, uh, in the previous point, we are making use of group share tree IGMP, whereas in the second one, we are making use of source tree involved in performing all these tasks. Okay, so in these two ways, all the operation is going to be happening. Okay. This multicast host then attach the routers and other routers. And then uh, multicast routing in the internet. How this will be working? Now we have already seen the distance vector protocol. So some of the advancement is performed in the distance vector protocol. And we have a distance vector multicast routing protocol that is DVMRP. So this is one of the protocol used for uh, implementing the practical aspects of the multicasting. Okay. Uh, so here there is the protocol independent multicast PIM. So this is one of the standard which is uh, used along with this multicast routing internet protocol MR MRP. Okay. And this is some of some of case study and some standardization techniques they are given. And this completes our multicast. And this also completes our model number three. So you guys you can see uh, in this broadcast and multicast, there are two techniques. In one technique, you are sending the information from one sender to all of our neighbors. Okay irrespective of the network, whether they are in the my network or in others network, you are sending them, that is flooding concept in the broadcast, whereas in the unicast and in the multicast, only you are sending the copy to the directly attached the routers and the neighbors, that's it, this is the only difference, and there you can see some of the small points, how to find the minimum spanning tree, how to find the spanning tree, and by using IGMP protocol, okay, so all the those concepts are there and this is all about the model number.